There's a French twist when it comes to eating healthier, and my next guest even wrote a book about it. Carol Cottrell believes there are 12 secrets to decadent dining that will help people manage their weight. She's joining me from New York this morning to share a few of those secrets. Carol, first off, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brianna. Good to be here. And in your book, this idea, I mean, people kind of say, let them eat cake. That's not such huh. a bad thing in your book, is it? Not at all. Listen, Americans are at war with food, and they're losing. 45 million people are on a diet, and in this nation, obesity rates are higher than ever. And then we have the French. They're having a love affair with food, and they're healthier, they live longer, and they're slimmer. So what are some of the secrets that you've discovered? I think the biggest secret is that the pleasure center of the brain really has so much to do with the way that we metabolize food. So there's a direct connection between what's happening in your brain and what's happening in your gut. What does that mean exactly? So when you're talking about some of these 12 secrets to decadent dining, give us a, give us a teaser on one, I would say. Well. Okay, let's take, let's take the typical diet. And the typical diet, we're asked to keep a food journal. We write down everything we eat and we monitor it. But really what's happening, if you think about it, has nothing to do with the food we're eating, but what is driving that behavior. Why are we eating? So instead of journaling our food, what I ask my clients to do is journal their thoughts around food. Find out what's driving their behavior. That's interesting. So you're t when you say your thoughts around food, maybe you talk about uh, things such as, you know, were you upset about something at work and then you went and ate a cheeseburger? Or were you having a great day and you had a salad? Or did you feel content after you ate or did you feel like you'd overeaten? That kind of, those kind of thoughts? Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, once you understand that behavior and you realize that you're not a loser without willpower and that there is something driving that behavior, you're able to make a shift. But if you understand that there is that behavior and yeah. uh, then how do you manage it? So maybe I know that I had a bad day at work and so I wanted that giant chocolate shake. But, you know, how do I next time avoid that? Is it just the sort of self-awareness of it will help me? Is that your theory? Well, that's the beginning of it. That's the first step. And then there's many different things that we go into with the 12 steps. Like, uh, for example, moralizing food, naming food good or bad, so that you feel like when you eat the food, you're good or bad, depending what you, on what you eat. So um, that's one thing we try to turn around and understand that food is neutral. There are some foods that are healthier than others and those are better choices, but you're not a good or bad person depending on what you eat. Fascinating. Carol Catrill with us here today. Uh, we really uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you.